Welcome everyone and happy Thursday. I'm Tirza Hollenhorst, the CEO of Lumen, and I'm excited to be with you today. Today I am here with Seth Bunting and um, it's a real delight to be here with Seth. Um, Seth's a community organizer and systems designer and he really works um, at the nexus of experiences and location-based entertainment. Um, Seth is a co-creator at The Canvas and The Canvas is a community-centric hospitality group um, building a home for solutionists. And what the Canvas really does is um, develop, operate, and program experiential locations, um, bringing Seth's real dedication to building connection and collaboration. And what we're, I'm excited to explore with Seth today is the role of ritual in building community. Um, welcome, Seth. Hi, how are you? Really good. Hey, um, good to be here. Um, so, um, Seth, just to kick us off, um, something that um, a language distinction I often hear you point to um, is really the, the key difference between um, growing community and building community. We often talk of building community and every time someone says that, um, um, you remind them that, that we grow community. Um, tell us more about that. I think it, I, I think it can be felt. Like if you just listen to the words and feel into the words, it's, it's you know, um, we, we began a lot of the work that we are doing now, both with the canvas and with uh, Presence, Planet Home, a bunch of different stuff. They, we began uh, looking at how these shared experiences or shared moments in time or what fire off a community. And so um, our hypothesis was that the pulse and the repetition in those shared experiences is what actually drives a community or brings it together. And so uh, the opportunity was to look at the operational systems, but also uh, just the natural behavior kind of process that occurs between people when they share experiences together and how do you create efficiencies around that. So we, um, I think what's been really exciting for me as a community conversation continues to come online in such a dynamic and um, just new and innovative way. Um, there's so many new tools and, and things to use and people are talking about location-based communities. And the more that that comes online, the more uh, of an opportunity uh, that we have to see that the process of actually becoming communities is organic. It's, uh, it's, it's grown, it's moved through, and it's moved in relationship with each other. And uh, yeah, and so I'm really, you know, I'm big on the etymology of it. I'm big on, you know, looking at how um, words create meaning. Um, and so if we're shared meaning making machines, then um, the idea of growing community just sounds a lot more attractive to me than building it. Yeah, it does. When you start talking about like building with people, um, the connotations are, are unkind. <laughs> um, something you just started to already hit on is that role of, um, of repetition. Uh, and that coming back together again and again. Um, maybe you can share with us a bit about what you've seen in the role of repetition. I mean, yeah, I can I can see it in my own behaviors, in my own personal journey, um, and also just in kind of the history of human species and how meaning came about. Um, so if we start all the way back to like more dog dogmatic like religion, uh, landscapes, um, we can see that uh, throughout history, the power dynamic of message dissemination really came from a organization or religion's ability uh, to create meaning around subject matter, to create built environments around that narrative, and then to drive a pulse and a repetition in the way that people gathered around that message. It's really in many ways why we've seen the dissemination of religion. Now, if you think to like you know, as a kid, as a baby, uh, the um, the speed by which we learn is based on how how much we're driven to understand or to um, create sense of something that we haven't haven't known before. And I think that um, in many ways, when we learn by repeating skills, and it's the idea of practice, right? Um, 
uh, it stays with us. So I think, you know, I, I grew up more of a generalist than really focusing on kind of a mastery in any skill. I was, you know, my friends were always like the best at a sport or like, you know, board games or chess or whatever we were doing. There was always somebody that was way better. But um, how my dad taught me uh, to learn was really about learning the, the, the root mechanics of the system, of the game, um, you know, where the boundary lines were. How does the, you know, how do you, how, how does the offense work? How does defense work? How do you support other people to be better at the collaborative thing that you're doing? Um, and by learning those mechanics, um, it, it allowed me to kind of learn a system, maybe not master it, but at least be able to converse or play with people that were great at it. And then later in life, when I came back to whether it was a volleyball court or a chessboard or a computer program, the mechanics were there, like, like they say, riding a bike. Um, and that only happens with enough pulse and repetition and practice around a subject material, focusing on what I would consider fundamentals. Nice. Um, I can see how that really applies to the work that I've seen you produce. Um, and how you really do think about mechanics um, and the underlying system that's driving anything. Um, and you have also brought that into this idea of, um, of ritual, of the things, not just that we keep coming together, but that we have these activities that we repeat. Um, maybe can you, you speak a bit about what ritual means to you and how you've seen that contribute to community? Yeah, I, um, you know, I've, ritual has been a, a word that's been around me for a while. Uh, I think, I mean, it's, it's a cultural word, but also just within my friend circles, there's numerous different friends working on companies where the word ritual is actually in the company. So pretty heavy focus on it. I've always kind of considered that, that um, topic for me is it was always more so practice. Um, but it was like sacred practice. It was like it was around like personal practice. What was uh, what was going to help me create the best version of myself? And so I think that's what I would consider to be ritual. Um, and in many ways, it's uh, ritual is also for me an acknowledgement of that which I don't know. And so there's a lot of like sitting still, contemplation, philosophy, like process synthesis that occurs in ritual state. Um, and yeah, I, that's, that's kind of what I have on that. Um, what I've seen you, um, do is, is bringing this into the, how you think about the program at the canvas, mm -hmm. um, and how you think about creating program across different locations. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you can speak a bit about how you've really delved into ritual and the role of creating these continuous experiences and how that, um, layers onto what you what you want to do with programming. Yeah, so um, when we were looking at uh, communities around the world that were actively pursuing positive change, they wanted to make a positive change in the world. Uh, and they were having shared experiences and they were talking about it a lot, but there wasn't a lot of like follow through or applied innovation or just application of idea based on the community model. And as we were looking at it, we we're like, well, that's maybe just uh, a lack of, of shared language or shared processes that allow them to kind of have a coherent working state together. Um, this can happen with, you know, just the way in which you have a communal dinner and how dishes are cleaned up and how, you know, people share grace at the beginning or whatever it is. There's ritual and there's process in that, uh, which means there's repeatability in that, which also creates efficiencies around production. It creates efficiencies around shared language between communities. Um, and I think in many ways there's uh, the opportunity that we saw was that, um, there were practices within communities or behaviors within communities that if they were incentivized, the community would just function fundamentally better, right? We talk about trust and collaboration. We talk about innovation. We talk about just general communal activity. We talk about um, our relationships to ourselves, to each other, to nature. And so what we started looking at, like what is the simplest way to look at a program or how, what we consider a menu of experiences. Um, how do you program environments or program locations with experiences that were really pointing towards specific behaviors? So uh, a lot of our experiences are kind of umbrellas for a bunch of micro experiences that live underneath them that are nested. Um, so you have an experience called uh, share. 
right? The, the, it's the, most of them are single words. And the idea of share is to really uh, uh, use tools that facilitators would um, uh, guide the group or guide the community through in the shared experience. Use those tools to share what you're up to in the world, to share what you're passionate about, to share a talent. Um, and so the, the, the experience of share, while it might happen on the same night each week, the dynamicism of what's possible inside it is pretty unique because there's all different ways in which sharing can occur. However, the main mechanics of how we produce the event, who's facilitating the event, how food comes in, all that kind of stuff, that's built into a repeatable system. So there's like repeatable production mechanics, but then there's also just the idea of a community repeating a shared experience like you would go to a yoga class or the same nightclub on a Friday night to see a DJ and hang out with the same community. Um, so the idea is just how do we change the environments a little bit, but still practice like how do we go to a new kind of church without dogma? Mm -hmm. um, I uh, talk a lot about behavior change being something that we really have to do. Um, and the, the reference I use is that we, we don't teach children table manners by giving them a PowerPoint presentation on table manners. Wow. <laughs> we teach children table manners by eating at a table and redirecting behavior that's not aligned with whatever our family has agreed as appropriate table manners. And so what I really hear you doing is um, setting the table um, and offering people ways of being that create more um, creative, connected and innovative communities. You know, one of my biggest fears in everything that we're creating is to, uh, um, to, to go through the process of creating something that is for me, and I love that you said setting the table. Like it lands for me, it feels right. Um, I, in experience design, there is an over, uh, uh, there's almost like an invasion of privacy that can occur if it's overdone, like directing traffic too much. There's a very, there's a very fine balance because on one hand, we like freedom and we appreciate our ability to be a sovereign being in the world. And on the other hand, there's a quote, I'll use a quote from my friend Jason, who uh, said that uh, we love to be taken for a ride. We want to be stewarded. We want to have our hand held as we are guided towards a re-enchanting world. And in that stewardship, we want to lose control. Sometimes freedom means less choice. And so what we're looking at is the balance between creating a step or a platform uh, for people to step up onto on their own, but also looking at how we can point at the step without saying that they have to take a step, right? So uh, in, I, I think back to like Landmark, I don't know if people on here have like been a part of or been through any of the Landmark curriculum. I did it when I was younger, but the idea of it and a lot of the themes that came from it, um, one of the things that I really took away was around relationship building and how in any relationship we ultimately, we we're looking at it either as a like, often we're looking at relationship as having some kind of outcome. And, uh, and if that's the case, in order to get to an outcome in relationship, I think often people think, oh, I'm gonna go share with somebody the opportunity that I have for them. We can't, you can't like, you can't have an opportunity for somebody else. An opportunity is something that someone has to find for themselves. So what we can do is create possibility we can create a field by which they can see the possibility between the relationship between whatever you're creating and them, but it's their choice whether they see it as an opportunity or not. And so um, for me, I continuously think about how we're actually bringing people into the space uh, and, and allowing them to uh, um, make a decision on whether or not they want to sign up for you know, their own personal or internal transformation. This is not, we're not, uh, again, we're not offloading dogma. We're just creating environments and some simple mechanics by which, uh, and or I shouldn't even say mechanics, it's really just efficiencies around how this kind of stuff can be explored and, and uh, repeated. Um, but there's enough room for emergence and that's what's exciting about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And would you have any like just kind of final thoughts or words for other um, community growers, people trying to cultivate community about how they could think about incorporating ritual into their work? Yeah, well, I think um, 
and before I just double like double click on on the ritual thing, I think the important thing for me to share is that all of our work, everything that we're doing is all within the field of design. And so often we hear uh, design and we think visual, graphic design, landscape design, architectural, um, you know, web design, whatever it is. Uh, but design is actually a process of thought that allows us to reverse engineer complex problems, to look at the challenges or the steps necessary to get to some future casted destination. Uh, and within that, we clean and we create efficiencies. Um, and so the beauty in holding design as the, the place by which we're exploring all of this is that we're really in an inquiry of what is, um, not only what is best for the communal or collaborative ecosystem as a, as a whole, but also what is, from an experience standpoint, what is most conducive for the human spirit? Um, and so I like, there's a really great quote by my friend Katie that she says, immersive design is a sort of choreography for the human experience. And so if that's the case, then if I look at ritual and I look at the power of ritual, like there's, there's a responsibility to create spaces by which ritual occurs. Because if we're innately creating locations by which ritual occurs, then we're affecting human behavior long term. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for me, when I think about ritual, it's kind of the next layer in from experience design and like kind of experiences around behavior, which is like really looking at the core human um, soul, the, the heart of a human and how we go about practicing that soul and that heart. Uh, and that um, I don't want to like I don't want to even pretend like I have answers around it all I want to do is support pe people in having their own kind of ritual sets and hopefully doing that around community because we believe it's what's really going to drive um, connection and collaboration and ultimately long-term possibility of like great work in the world in communities um thank you so much Seth I know that as people are coming out of these times where we've been so separated, the desire to come together is gonna to be incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. And so people are gonna find their way um, into places and into communities. And I think um, you have some really great words of wisdom for people to think about how they can create those gatherings with intention, um, with integrity, um, and, and really with um, uh, like the capacity to take their people for a ride and to really um, cultivate the experience for them so that not only um, are we coming together, but we're getting, we're, we're leaving with something that carries forward into the future. And that's the world that we're trying to create. Um, when we talk about the canvas, we're, we're, it's called the canvas world for a reason. We're creating a world by which this could potentially occur within. And that said, um, you know, one of the next steps that we have is a really special call for creators. Um, where we'll be kind of going out into the world to all of you and saying, hey, uh, we at the Canvas want to create this kind of world. We're hoping others do too. And if you want to come create that with us, let us know. So we'll be looking for producers and production designers and experiential designers and facilitators and chefs and all the cool things that go into making really magical moments for people. Um, so if you're one of those people, watch out for what we're doing. And if you have any ideas or thoughts, uh, my email is s at the canvas.world and you are welcome to shoot me an email. Perfect. We will put those um, links below. Um, thank you everybody for joining us. I think that's a great place to, to sign off. Uh, thank you Seth so much for, um, for the conversation today and um, we'll link to your information so people can be in touch. Great. Thank you, Teresa. Thanks.